And that would be my recommendation for a horse like that. The downside to that is... Welcome back to another episode of the Biomain Scoop. Colin Carson. Last uh, episode, Bryce filmed it in slow motion, accidentally. <laughs> yeah. so, the last episode may or may not be available by video, or it may be like six hours long, or it might look a little funny. What did you say, 62 gigs worth? <laughs> yeah. For about 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I talked really slow. <laughs> Um, this episode though is in real time, right? Good. <laughs> and it's how to keep coats healthy and shiny. Nice and shiny. That's right. Nice and shiny. <clears throat> um, what are some pointers? Well, first I wanted to shout out one of our favorite followers out here. Um, someone that's been using the product for, um, a while and that we've just had a lot of fun working with is um, Amberly Snyder. A lot of you are probably familiar with her story and her Netflix show. Um, and anyways, that's someone we just wanted to shout out today was Amberly Snyder. We've made some cool videos with her in the past that a lot of people shared on Facebook about her story and about um, her Netflix show and also about her experience with Biomain. So if you are not familiar with Amberly Snyder's story, um, don't want to spoil it for you. Go check her out on Instagram. I think it's just at Amberly Snyder. Um, and go to our Facebook page or wherever and look up for some of our videos with Amberly. Um, she's pretty inspiring. So, anyways, today we're getting into how to keep the coat healthy and shiny. Um, and this is especially <coughs> as spring is. Right around the corner. Right around the corner. Upon us. And then summer right around the corner. Finally, the horses are starting to shut out. And, you know, we want to help you have the best looking coat during summer, during show season. So, so aside from feeding good quality feed mm -hmm. and aside from feeding Biomain, um, because Biomain is going to add that shine and that glow, keep them slicked off. Um, but aside from that is what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So let's just, for sake of this conversation, assume you're on good quality hay and you're feeding a scoop of Biomain a day. What are other contributing factors to a shiny coat is what we're going to talk Can about. Can I say one thing, though? A lot of people have asked, because when we talk about Biomain helping the mane and tail, we talk about how um, you know Biomain will support the mane and tail growth, you know, it'll support making that mane and tail thicker and, and healthier and longer. Um, so a lot of people will say, well, will this cause, well, biomain cause my horse to, to hair up. Oh yeah. Um, and there's been people that say, Hey, it made my horse hair up. No, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't. And it doesn't reason being is it was specifically formulated to target mane and tail. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, one of the unplanned benefit, benefit, make sure I say that right. Unplanned benefits. Yeah was keeping those coats. It's not going to make a horse shut off, mm -hmm. but it's going to keep that coat slick and shiny yeah. without hairing them up. Like all summer long, my, all winter long, if my horses like are under lights and blanketed and being fed Biomain a scoop a day and on good feed, they stay slick and shiny. Like I just picked up a horse from Arizona that's been in Arizona all winter long and it hasn't necessarily been warm all winter long mm -hmm. but it's been in a barn under lights and blanketed it looks like mm, all the horses in utah do in july and august yeah slicked out and it gets a scoop of biomain a day <clears throat> and that's the entire barn that's what the entire barn looked like there's the entire training barns of horses that are being fed biomain throughout the winter throughout the summer all year long that they're not hair up. Biomain will not make a coat hair up. It will, however, and you've seen a lot of our before and afters uh, of horses with skin conditions mm -hmm. or coat conditions where they've started losing hair, like falling off, <clears throat> excuse me, because of a, like a bacterial type infection, uh, or they've rubbed that out. 
biomain will help to grow that coat back. And it's not necessarily like that that area of the of the coat was damaged beyond repair. Like you're not gonna grow hair back into a scar by feeding biomain. That skin is damaged, right? But places that they've rubbed or or got some type of infection and lost hair, biomain will help to grow back that hair in a healthy natural way to reinstate the the coat to what it the rest of the body is does that make sense yeah yeah and the other thing i was going to say is we're going to talk about this in a later podcast but your horse has three different types of hair correct um and so the the hair that is in the mane and tail um is Differs different is a different type of hair than the hair that's in the coat or the hair that makes up the whiskers or the hair that's in the ears so there's there's different types of hair that your horse has and biomain was specific to mane and tail. yeah and there's an overlap between those hairs on, you know, obviously certain nu- nutrients that help improve the health of those. But that what biomine will do is one, it was specifically formulated to target the mane and tail, but I mean, it's going to, it's not going to turn one type of hair into a different type of hair. It's Correct. just going to provide some nutrients that those different types of the hair happen to, um, happen to need. And so basically it's just going to improve the health of all three of those types of hair. Correct. Um, even though it was specifically formulated for the type of hair that's in the mane and tail. But yeah. anyway, so assuming you're giving your horse the nutrition it needs and you're, you have biomain. A scoop a day. A scoop a day. Um, what are some other tips? Other tips are the most detrimental thing to a good, shiny, healthy coat is in the summer months is sunlight. Mm-hmm. Sun's hard on just like it is on our skin. If you spend a lot of time out in the sun without any type of protection, whether it's clothing, sunblock, whatever, your skin gets damaged. Sunlight is damaging. Um, so keeping those horses shaded. I'm not saying you can't keep a horse in sunlight at all, um, but long, prolonged periods of time out in the sun, hot sun being cooked, is going to dull those coats. A lot of b- horses that are black in the winter or, or even black in the summer, if they're left out in the sun too long, they get sun bleached, they start to look like a bay. You know what I mean? They, they lighten up to where they almost look like a brown horse or a bay horse. Um, which, and I only bring that up to prove the point that sun can be damaging. Yeah. So keep them shaded or, or give them the opportunity to find shade. Uh, a lot of people say, well, he's in a pasture up in wherever I only use that, um, scenario because I had a discussion with someone that pastures out in Wyoming. They're like, they're in a big open pasture and there's no shade, no trees, no nothing in these pastures. I'm like, well, that's tough. You literally can't really complain about your horse's coat being sun bleached. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. the truth of it. Like, like well, he's on a pasture with no shade. Okay, sorry. Build shade or pull him out of the pasture and put him in a pen. Like yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Which leads us to another point. There are like fly sheets, which are if you don't know what a fly sheet is, it's just a really lightweight, breathable type. It's a sheet. It's not, it's not really a blanket, but it fits a horse like a winter blanket does yeah. as far as covering their body like that. But it's thin. It's, it's uh, what's the word? Permeable, breathable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> breathable to where, you know, a breeze can go through it. That horse isn't, it's gonna, not going to cause that horse to overheat and sweat. <clears throat> and they make certain fly sheets that are UV protected. And that would be my recommendation for a horse like that. The downside to that is... Horses get into trouble. Horses get into mischief. Mm -hmm. That horse may roll and get a leg through a strap. You know, they're just high maintenance. Keeping those sheets on is high maintenance for horses out in pasture. You got to check them frequently because the last thing you want to do is put a sheet on to protect their hair, their coat, and have them get tangled up on something or have it get caught up on a post or something. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just before I recommend, after recommending putting a fly sheet on that's UV protectant to help protect that coat, I always follow up with their high maintenance. You gotta, the actual sheet isn't high maintenance, but the maintenance comes from periodically and frequently checking on that horse to make sure he's not getting himself into any trouble with it. Yeah. Um, I think along those lines too, the, (coughs) something that's critical is making sure that the sheet fits correctly because if that sheet is, First of all, if the sheet's too big, then 
what you're talking about, that horse getting into mischief. It's just going to be sloppy, and it's like wearing a coat that's too yeah. big and trying to <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to squeeze through somewhere tight. Like you're yeah. going to get hung up, snagged. There's a better chance of it getting snagged and um, causing damage to the sheet or to your and horse. getting you in a bind. You know what I mean? If you were to get stuck in a little area. You freeze and you naturally find a way to get out of it. Horses don't necessarily do that. If they get <laughs> in a tight spot, they try and get out of there as fast as possible. And a lot of times it results in injury. Yeah. And then if it's too short, then if it doesn't fit your horse right, you know, it's going to rub on certain areas of the horse that is going to cause rubbing. And I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing at the base of most of our tips is we're trying to limit irritation caused to the horse so that horse has a lower tendency to rub because that's when you get tails rubbed out. That's when you get manes rubbed out. You get that's why they even rub rub opposite sides of their neck from the mane. You'll get big sores rubbed on their body um, from you know irritation such as a blanket rubbing them wrong. But on the flip side, if a horse gets sunburned, that causes them to itch. Have you ever gotten sunburned to the point that you just itch? Yeah, oh yeah. It's miserable. Mm -hmm. And try to convince a horse not to scratch that itch you know what i mean <laughs> and you can tell a kid hey the more you scratch it, the more it's going to hurt you might talk them out of rubbing it but you're not going to talk a horse out of rubbing it you're not going to be rubbing aloe vera on your no, horse you might <laughs> you might but the point is allow them to get out of the sun in all honesty that's yeah. you want to prevent sun bleach they can't be in the sun for long periods of time the sun's healthy for them right Mm -hmm. Sounds healthy for us, but you don't want them out for prolonged amounts of time without the ability to shade up. That horse is going to shade up if he feels like he needs to shade up. Yeah, that's the truth of it. Yeah, like a horse point. isn't going to sit. A horse isn't going to have shade right here and stand out and cook if he's feeling like he's being cooked. He's going to get shade. Give them that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. If you don't pen or if you if you're pasturing, I mean, you can build fairly economically some type of makeshift shelter yeah. to provide some shade for them. Um, I think another thing I was going to say is like the bleaching you're talking about that goes on in when they're exposed to the sunlight too long, that's not, that is reflective of the health of the hair as well. It's not just like, well, the color changed. So really it's no big deal. Like, Sure, there may be some natural color change just by any exposure to the sun, but if you're seeing a big color change, that means the health of the hair. I mean, it's going to be drier hair. Um, anyway, so that's there's other issues going on other than just simply the color of your horse is different than it was in the winter. Yeah. Well, and some horses naturally change, like Blue Ray, the blue roan mare that we've got, she gets black in the summer, in the winter, sorry when she grows her winter coat, mm -hmm. even if it's thin, she just, in the winter, she darkens up really, really dark. You can tell she's roan, but she's dark, dark. And in the summer, she is still blue. Yeah. Blue as can be like the epitome of what a cool blue roan should look like. And she's in the same pen in the winter as she is in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, I mean, obviously when we get her out, there's, it's, it's all seasonal. Their mm -hmm. coat, their coats will change, but if you can tell that that horse is, coat is dull that hair is coarse feeling it's not soft and supple yeah um there's maybe some health issues i hate to say issues but there's there's maybe something internally going on um causing that horse to not have that healthy of a coat if you're allowing that horse to be shaded and, and all that if you're does that make sense if you're yeah, doing yeah, everything yeah. that uh, not to say that we we know everything but if you're following all the tips and advice that you hear here um, and your horse's coat is still in bad shape, there may be something more internal going on that you may ought to go to your vet and say, hey, I'm doing everything I should be to have this horse look good and he still looks like garbage. That's when you need to go yeah, and take him Yeah, definitely. In. I think that's a good point because... If they feel, if they look good, they feel good. Mm -hmm. That's And I don't mean like, oh, you've got that horse has a big mane, he looks good, he's going to feel good. If their coat looks healthy... Mm -hmm. They feel healthy. They really yeah. do. And that's not that's not a big sell on biomane. Like, hey, have them look good. They'll feel good. No. If they look crappy, they feel crappy. Mm -hmm. It's like us. Like, you can tell when a friend or a family member, someone you see frequently, feels 
ill. You yeah. know what I mean? You can tell just by yeah. the way they look. Same with our horses. Yeah. Their mannerisms, their coat is a big reflection of that. The problem with the coat looking bad is it's taken a while for that coat to look bad. That horse has, has felt poor for a while. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So keep an eye on that. You don't want to see a, a horse with a bad coat, you know, start to taper off and feel like, oh, yeah, he may not be feeling good. If that's the case. He's already felt poor for a while. Yeah. Take him in. Get him looked at. Yeah, that's a good point because, yeah, pretty much all horses are going to have some color change just naturally from shedding out. But when you start to see that hair being dull and coarse and just the coat looking shabby in general, um, there's probably some underlying issues that mm -hmm. need to be addressed. Um, so I would say pretty much it's kind of a two-sided, um, I guess, tutorial or there's basically two main points for keeping the coat healthy and, and shiny is one we started with the premise that you have healthy mm -hmm. nutrition like the coat is going to be the healthiest and shiniest from the inside out you got to give it the right nutrition and biomain can can help with that and two um keeping them protected from the sun as best you can yeah a lot of people i'm sure we'll see in the comments we've seen before well i just use like a like a shine spray mm -hmm. or a detangler that has kind of a glossy finish. I'll just spray that on them before shows and they shine up really good. If you're feeding, if your horse has good, new, good hay, like if you're feeding a good quality hay, nothing but good. And I can say this from personal experience on all the horses I've got at the house. Yeah. If you're feeding good quality hay and one scoop of bio a day, you will never feel like you should. And your horse is healthy, obviously you should never feel like you should spray you have to spray a shine yeah. enhancer on them. They glow. Like, they look outstanding. So many people always ask, hey, what are you doing different? They're on good alfalfa, and they get a scoop of Biome in a day. Yeah. And they just shine. Like that little Lambo horse, mm -hmm. little heel horse. Yeah. He's just, he looks like you dipped him in some type of shine enhancer. Mm -hmm. Like, he looks like you dipped him in there and then took him to the show because he just... He's, I mean, the sun reflects off his coat and when he's not on, if he's not on the product, which there's been times that like we've been out of town and traveling and stuff, the horses at the house just didn't get it as frequently as they need to before we set up a feeding schedule and stuff for being out of town. And you could tell the difference fairly quickly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Within a, a couple of weeks, you could tell, hey, he, you could tell he's not on it. So anyways, that's my point. If you're feeding them good quality hay and a scoop of Biomain and daily mm -hmm. you shouldn't feel like you should have to give any type of other enhancing sprays or, or coat conditioners because they look outstanding and assuming like they're clean like lambo as much as he shines if he goes and rolls around in the dirt he's not going to shine you know what i mean <laughs> assuming they're clean um but those are my tips really keep them out of the sun if you can or at least give them the ability to keep stay out of the sun <clears throat> um make sure they're healthy feed them good quality feed a scoop of biomain and uh keep them clean it's kind of real simple it's almost common sense type stuff but it doesn't hurt to hear it again yeah scoop a day keeps the ugly away really does <laughs> nobody likes riding an ugly horse I, <laughs> I shouldn't say nobody some people might i don't <laughs> um cool well i hope this was helpful if you have any questions or comments um and again jump on and look up amber lee's story it's like you said inspiring and like it's one that you just feel like my trials throughout my life aren't as tough as I thought they were. Yeah. And it's not a look at it for to feel bad for anybody. It's just if if she can overcome the things that she's had go on in her life and be of good spirits and, and have the mentality that she has now, personality that she has, like there's no reason anybody should be down. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's a really cool story. Great story and a great girl. So yeah, and uh, comment, like, share. Um, if you haven't subscribed, wherever you're listening to this podcast, um, you know, subscribe so you know when we post new ones. Uh, we're trying to bring as many of these as we can. We're also going to be starting to get some guests from the equine world on here, um, and you know, some influential people or just some cool stories that we've heard. Um, so if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to hear about or people you think we should interview um 
let us know. But anything else? No, just really anybody. If it's business owners in the equine industry, equine athlete, not equine athletes, I'll interview a horse. <laughs> <laughs> any of the athletes in any discipline, I'd love to go interview a show jumper or yeah. a cross country rider or some of the top dressage riders. or into the rodeo world a lot uh, with the roping, barrel racing, and that. So we can interview a lot of them. Um, but if you, whatever discipline you like, it's raining, cutting, cow horse, mm -hmm. we'd love to. We just want suggestions. We've got our big long list of who we want to talk to, but that's kind of personal biased who we want to hear from. If you guys have suggestions, we'd love to hear them and we'll do our best to go meet with them. Perfect. Thanks for listening. Peace. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so don't hesitate to comment on our videos and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.